In this video, I wanna to talk to you about sealing and insulating rim joists. I wanna talk about best practices. Rim joists, also called band joists, and sill plates are often overlooked in under-insulated locations on a house. The rim joist is a box-like cavity that the floor joists connect to and sit on um, on the foundation sill and foundation wall. Rim joists and sill plates, if not sealed, are notorious areas for air leakage and pest infiltration. The rim joist is located above grade and for many years we, we treated it basically similar to an above wall installation, insulation, installation. And we did that by stuffing fiberglass insulation in them. This method, it's no longer recognized as best practice. Best practice for rim joists and sill plates is to seal all cracks against air leakage and create a vapor barrier, then insulate the area. There are three different approaches to accomplish rim joist area sealing. They are full cavity spray foam with closed cell spray foam, flash and bat using spray foam and uh, fiberglass bats, and rigid board and fiberglass bat. And we'll talk about all three. The practice of insulating those rim joists with the fiberglass bats, it's no longer recommended, guys. And it's mostly because fiberglass bats are air permeable and it allows that warm, humid interior air to contact that cold rim joist. Warm air can condense on cold rim joists and that's gonna cause mold and rot. If you've ever pulled a piece of insulation down and you notice black spots, that's a clue that there are air leaks in that area. Fiberglass bats are a great filter and they capture dirt, pollen and dust that come from the outside of the house or get sucked out. While mold will not grow on the fiberglass fibers, mold will grow on the dirt, pollen and other debris that the fiberglass captures, as well as craft paper on the fiberglass. So the best practice to prevent air leaks, mold and rot issues is to seal the rim joists and sill area with either rigid foam board or closed cell spray foam, polyurethane foam. Closed cell spray foam is by far the fastest and best approach for insulating a rim joist in my opinion. And, and it's probably the best thing to do on larger projects because it's more efficient and the spray and use a professional spray foam contractor and they just get it done. But you can decide to do this yourself on smaller projects. And if you're gonna do that, then you're gonna use a froth pack. And we use DAPS Touch and Foam System 600. It's a spray foam insulation. Um, it comes as a two part component polyurethane closed cell foam, it's two canisters. And we use it to completely fill the, the sill area and the rim joist area. The System 600 spray foam, it's the best approach for large bays as well as for filling um, the concrete block cell openings. If you've got a concrete foundation, it fills those up nicely. I like the System 600 because it's easy to use. It saves me money by allowing me to do the insulation portion myself and it eliminates me from having to call that spray foam contractor on small jobs. It's, it's just, I can move quicker with it. Um, the, six, the System 600, it is a two tank system that meters the chemical flow, which means that it gives you greater control and minimizes waste. And I typically will use it, and I'll start by dispensing the foam in multiple layers. So I'll start in half inch layers, and I'll move from one bay to the next allowing the foam to expand, and then I'll go back and install more. Once cured, closed cell spray foam has an R value of R6.5 per inch. And I usually shoot for two inches if I can. Now there's also called flash and bat. Now flash and bat or flash and fill refers to a method of installing spray foam to seal the air leaks and prevent the warm air from contacting that cold joist. And then once that foam has dried and cured, you install fiberglass bat insulation up to it, um, or fill the whole cavity or do the whole floor joist if you want. We also use the DAP System 600 for this flash and bat approach. And again, the goal is to try to get uh, two inches thick of spray foam. That's gonna give you the proper vapor barrier uh, and insulation value as well. The flash and bath method is less costly um, because I can avoid that spray foam contract and I can just do that myself. Many times when we're having insulation contractor come and do fiberglass for us, what we'll do is we'll go around and we'll do the flash portion of the flash and bat, and we'll just cover all our joists and seal the air leaks, create that active and effective vapor barrier, and then we'll, when the uh, insulator comes, we'll let them just fill everything with the bats. So that's the flash and bat. They'll do the bat portion. 
Now, using rigid insulation board is another method, and, and that's a good way to keep material costs down, but it's more time consuming, and it requires you to cut two inch thick rigid insulation board to fit between the floor joists, glue and fasten them up against the rim joists. This can be both time consuming, and if you're gonna do this, I really do suggest that you purposely cut your rigid board a half inch smaller on the height and the width. Don't try to get a super tight fit. We then glue that foam board in place. We use DAP's DynaGrip adhesive. Once adhered in place, we use the DAP Touch, touch and Foam low temp polyurethane foam sealant. It comes in cans and we use a spray gun applicator and we just seal around the edges of that, of that board. Once that's done, fiberglass bats can later be installed right up against the insulation boards um, as, in a bat method. Now, rigid insulation, it delivers a long-term stable thermal performance. It's going to give you about R5 per inch. And compared to spray foam, it's definitely harder to install, especially in awkward areas. And what I mean by that, for example, is tight spaces um, or maybe um, the rim joists are of the site of a lot of wiring or maybe pipe penetrations. That's going to be a problem for you guys. When I run into this situation, I just go right back to the froth pack. I use the DAP System 600 and I just fill that up with, with spray foam. That's probably my go-to preferred method for rim joists. Um, look, we just covered three different methods for creating a vapor barrier and insulating a rim joist area. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up. I'm Rob Robillard, and we'll see you next time here at Concord Carpenter.